Hello everyone, happy Halloween. Um, welcome to my YouTube tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make some of these little creepy jars. Not all of them, um, but some of them because some of them I watch tutorials from other people on YouTube on how to make and I don't wanna cause discourse. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make these little candy bars and how to make a cauldron. Um, I'll not be doing the overflowing potion because I already have one of these, but I can tell you how I did it. So, for this, you will need these printables, which are by Tony Ellison. Um, uh, as I said, I don't want to do any discourse. She did a tutorial on how to make these candy bars, but the, she did them bigger than 1 12th scale, and these, I'm doing these for, like, Dollhouse. And I also noticed that in her tutorial, I had a really hard time telling how she made them, because I get so confused during people's tutorials. If you want to watch how she made it, I will link her video down below. For the lollipops, you'll need some scrap clay, these little wire strips here that I've got, foam, glaze that is okay to work with clay, I'm using the Sculpey Satin Glaze here, liquid clays, I have liquid Sculpey and liquid Fimo Deco Gel, I'm most likely going to be using the Deco Gel, black clay, tin foil, a bundle of tiny jars, I got these off of eBay for like 50 of them for like 8 bucks, so I will link those down below. Flesh colored clay, clay that kind of resembles the color of worms, so I just kind of like made a meat colored clay and then um, added a lot of translucent to it. Was that she made individual little things of clay for these, and honestly, um, I don't have the patience or the time for that shit. I am going to take my strip of foam here and cut out a little tiny strip along the side. And then what I do is that I like to wait until all my little candy bar wrappers are cut out. And then I size up each little individual candy bar. And I recommend you fold before you try and put the um, foam inside. It just makes it a lot easier. And then with the little M&M packets or the Skittles, you're just gonna wanna fold these in half. And I put glue on both sides of the M&M wrapper, but I leave the top open. And you're gonna wanna let this dry. Take your strip of foam and you size it up and then put some glue down and put it in place and glue it. Put your glue fold it over and then hold it down. And then I do the same thing to the other side. And then at the corners here, you just wanna take a little bit more glue, put it inside and then pinch with your fingers. Get it to stick together. And then I take my nail and I make the crease along the where the foam is so it looks like the candy has been pressed. Do that to both sides and there you have it. For the M&Ms, I just open them up with a toothpick like this. I take my white craft sand or any color craft sand and I just fill it up a little bit. And once that is done, take your glue, fill up the hole and pinch it closed. And once they're dry and ready to go, I just took my glaze and I did a light coat over every piece of candy to give them a shine, just like Tony does. All of the candy bars. Take these nail dotting tools here. They look like this. I stick them on the ends like this and just push with my finger. And then I bring it down and I wrap it all the way around. So that way then when I put my clay in there, it's all ready to go. Now for our um, little lollipop parts. Take your scrap clay, roll out a snake, and then I cut off a little bit and round it into a ball and set that aside. And now once you have all of those rolled out, take one of your little strips of wire and gently just poke a hole. And once this is all done, you'll want to bake these. And now to finish up our lollipops, I'm going to take one of my wires that I painted white, dip it in a little bit of glue, and then take one of my round lollipops that is now fully baked and just stick it in. So then you take your lollipop here, you dip it in glue, you take your wrapper and you fold it around, and I just use my fingernails to pinch. Alright, so once that is dry, you will want to repeat these with all of them and cover them in glaze. Here are all of the suckers. 
take this worm color here and roll out a very thin snake. Now I'm taking one of my tools. This is a silicone tool that is flat on both sides and comes to a point. And I'm just taking it and I'm making little tiny crease marks along it like worms have, and then cutting it off and rounding out one end. And you can leave them flat, or what I like to do is I like to give them a bit of a curve so they look more like real and creepy, like so. And then I set that aside to be baked. And now to make the fingers, I'm just taking some flesh colored clay and rolling another thin snake. Now I'm taking one of my dotting tools and I'm just squishing the edge here to give like the fingernail look. Taking again my flat silicone tool, making little knuckle ridges, and then cutting off. When you have your desired amount of fingers and worms, I would pre-bake those for 5 to 10 minutes on 275. So then what I do for my worms and fingers, pick a jar, take my tweezers, put your worms in there, arrange them the way that you want them to be arranged, and then I take my liquid Fimo Deco Gel and I just squirt it right in. I'm going to leave this clear so you can really see the worms, and then I put my other worms in on the top so they look layered. And once you have this done, you'll want to put them in for 20 minutes for the blue Blood. I just mix Fimo Deco Gel with some red pastel and I only put a little bit in and then I put that in the bottom of my jar. I put my fingers in there, I mix it up and then I bake it. These are what the, blood, the jar bloody fingers and the worms look like now that it's finished. All right, now we are going to begin making our cauldron. So I took a little fo um, some foil and rolled it into a ball about this big. Once your clay is soft enough, I'm putting mine in my pasta machine on a four. Then I'm taking my clay and my foil and I'm wrapping my clay all the way around it. And then when it comes to the top, I just pull it off. So then take your leftover clay and roll it out again and wrap it around one more time. And this should do it. But if not, you can always wrap it around once more. So then take it in your hands, roll it around, smooth it out. Now, once you have your cauldron ball, so you just set it on your work surface and gently press until you get more of a flat area. Now we're going to make the top and the bottom. So take your black clay, what's left over, and roll out a thin sheet about the size of a toothpick. And I'm going to be doing this around the top. And so since I'm filling this one with candy, I'm making it a little bit wider and around more so that it looks like it's really full of candy. You want to try and get this one as even as possible. And so there we have it. There's the top on. And then you're going to want to take that and do the same thing for the bottom, but just in a smaller radius, and then set that aside. There you have it. All right, now I'm going to take my little clay piece that I rolled out here, roll out a little bit thinner of a snake, take it, and I'm going to roll it into a little handle like this. And repeat for one other, for the other side. Take your little strip and just gently place it on there. Do that for both sides. Grab one of the arms, or not the arms, the handles, and place it on one of the halves, on one of the sides. And I take my small dotting tool, and then I just use it to press down. Repeat with both sides. And there you go, that is how you make a little cauldron. So now that you have this done, you're gonna wanna put it in at 275 and bake it for 20 minutes. Now if you want to have it be an overflowing potion, like so, what I did was that I just took some bright green clay, I mixed it with some liquid Sculpey here to kind of turn it into a paste like you would if you were making a frosting for a cake. And then I put that all over and I took the same color clay and made little balls. I put it on 
here and then I covered it with more of the um, liquid clay to make it look like it was bubbling over. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take all these little candy corns. So I'm just going to start by smothering some glue onto the top of this. Make sure it fits and you're going to want to cover as much of the space as you can because there will be black exposed and you're just going to want to place these pretty much however you want until it's all the way full. Alright and now at the end here this is what all of the candy corn glued on looks like and I have glossed the whole cauldron and all the candy corn so it stays put so when I like touch it it doesn't come off. Take your lollipop, put the end in some glue. And then find an open space on here between the, um, the candy corns and just push it into the clay. And it should just go in really easy. You don't want to push it too hard or too quick and force it because then it can bend or it can push through up to the top. And then you're going to want to do that but in a similar space on the back here with the other lollipop like this and I just glue my candy on. And this is how to make a little candy cauldron for Halloween. And now I am going to set up my dollhouse that has my little yard haunt and I will show you all that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any other tutorials or requests let me know down in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a spooktacular Halloween.